Are you a first time home buyer? Well, what are some of the risks you might face and what are some ways that you can save money through the process? Well, joining me to discuss that topic is CJ Miller, a financial planner with Sensible Money. CJ, welcome. Hi, Bob. Thanks for having me. A pleasure. So um, I guess the first thing that we should tackle is what the unexpected costs are and how to manage them. Great. Yeah. So when you get a mortgage for your first home, there's typically four parts that everybody thinks about. There's the principal payment, the interest payment, and then your escrow, which is your property taxes and your insurance. But the two components that are often overlooked are homeowners association fees and mortgage insurance costs. So your HOA fees, a modest HOA fee can pay off in that if you have shared community property with some other of your neighbors, like landscaping or a pool, it can cover that but they can add up to be pretty exorbitant. I've seen some homeowners association fees that will increase your monthly payment by up to 30%. Um, So obviously if you're budgeting for a certain price and you don't account for that, it can really throw off your cash flow. And the second component is mortgage insurance. So a lot of people will race to put money down on a house that they fall in love with and not quite get to that 20% threshold. And there are some pros and cons to that, but the biggest con is that you end up having to pay something called mortgage insurance on top of your monthly payment. And so that's essentially extra money that protects the borrower um, or the lender from any potential defaults. And really all it does is add money to your monthly payment that isn't going to pay down the principal. Right. And what can people expect to pay in terms of their uh, mortgage insurance? Well, it depends on what area you're buying at, what your credit score is. I would say a few hundred a month if you're buying in the $300,000 price range. Right. Uh, Another expense, I've been a homeowner for many years now. Uh, Repairs are a big expense that probably everyone needs to budget for. Absolutely. And especially if you're buying your first home, it is common that you end up buying an older property. And so one of the big risks is that you put all of your emergency fund and life savings on a down payment because you've really had this goal in mind for a long time. And then you don't have any money left over for repairs, or maybe you stretched your mortgage payment to be too much of your monthly budget. And so when these repairs come up, a leaky roof here in Arizona, air conditioners are not cheap, um, but they're vital. So, you know, an air conditioner here is eight to 10 grand to get one that's viable that can work. Um, and that often, you know, I think a good rule of thumb is 3% of your home value. You want to budget in annually for maintenance and repairs of your home. So if you're buying a $300,000 house, that's $9,000 a year that you may not be intending to pay when you buy that house. Right. And there's a famous saying in the world of financial planning to live below your means. Uh, you've added another phrase to that now. Right. Yeah. You want to buy under your means. And so when you're purchasing a house, especially with interest rates so low and the realtor market being so competitive, you will get realtors telling you, put 5% down on this house. You know, you're young, you're earning income right now, your salary will go up over time, and you'll be able to pay it, but you'll lock in this low interest rate. And the challenge with that is you can end up being house poor and taking on more risk. I mean, that realtor doesn't know about your financial situation or your goals. Um, but if you buy something that, you know, essentially ends up, being less to pay in monthly mortgage interest than your current rent payment, you're much better off because then you have that wiggle room for repairs or new furniture. Um, but really, you know, you don't want to bite off more than you can chew or you'll end up, you know, the common term I think is house poor where on your net worth statement, it's growing and growing, but you don't actually have any liquidity in that property to pay for some of those things. Hmm. So what are some of the tips for saving money for first time home buyers? I think a great strategy is, in some cases, using the seller's realtor. So everybody I know that's looking to buy houses is on Zillow every week, looking at the area and kind of shopping themselves in a way that they didn't used to be able to do. And when you go to these open houses, the seller will have a realtor there. Um, You know, the realtor fees are any, you know, the average, I think, is 6%. So typically, you'll split that between the buyer and the seller. If you can work through the seller's realtor, they'll typically give you a discount. Say, all right, we'll do 4%, which is 2% each. And those costs can sneak up on you as well because they typically get added to the mortgage payment, um, like the balance, like closing fees do. And so, you know, 1% of a $300,000 house is, you know, $3,000. That's no joke. Um, You know, you can save just right then and there from using that realtor. 
Um, you know, and the other option too is, I mean, most people in their community, if you network a little bit, you can meet a realtor that is a family friend or a neighbor, and they'll typically give you a reduced fee also if you kind of ask them for it and have a good relationship. Mm. So uh, most people get a home inspection. You have some advice around that as well? I do. It's from personal experience. So we bought our first house and we got, you know, most inspectors will have a general level of knowledge. Um, the realtors will recommend somebody that they trust and they have a general level of knowledge around all the different kinds of trades that you need to look for in your first house, like the adequacy of the plumbing, the electric, the roof. Um, but what you find is that nobody really knows the code for the city that you're buying in, like tradesmen that work in that field. And so even if it's more money up front, hiring different inspectors to come in and get second and third opinions can really pay off in the buying process. Because if something's really not up to code, or you know you're going to need to get it fixed within a year of buying, you can negotiate a home warranty for some of those items. Or in some cases, the seller will even credit you some money from the down payment to fix, have those things fixed before you move in if they're really urgent. Right. So I know we have a lot of ground to cover here, but one question around home inspections and buying a first home is that in some places around the country, Folks are saying you can do a home inspection, but we're not going to lower the price if you find uh, that there's this or that amount of money that needs to be spent on a roof or plumbing or um, or, elect or the electrical work. Right. Yeah. And that's a function of the market, right? It's high demand. So, you know, if you've got a bunch of buyers willing to pay to flip that house because they're going to do the work themselves, then that's just the risk you're going to have to take buying into a competitive market. Um, but I think if you're patient and you don't overextend, um, then eventually you'll find the right house where that's not a big issue. Right. And then what about some of the state programs that are available to first-time homebuyers? What do folks need to know about those things? Well, they're, they're tremendously complex. Um, so like any government assistance, there's a lot of different qualifications you need to have, but most of them are structured in a way that you put a down payment down and to incentivize you, they will forgive part of your down payment. I know in Arizona, I think it's a 36 month payoff period. So if you don't miss a mortgage payment in your first three years, you essentially get a portion of your down payment back. Um, and so I know other states have similar programs. They don't always work out the best. So, you know, in certain cases, it'll require you to have mortgage insurance, even if you put 20% down, or it'll result in a higher interest rate. And so it's definitely situation specific, but it can be a great boost in your savings after if you make those payments. Right. So everyone wants to buy a house, but there are some people that shouldn't buy one. Absolutely. You know, people read that it's the leading way to build wealth in this country. And that's very true. But one of the reasons is because it's also a little risky. And so it's not for everybody. And here are some of the things that you should think about. One is if you have unstable income. If your income's really volatile or you haven't found what you want to do yet, the second you sign that loan to have that big mortgage, it limits your flexibility to take those risks and maybe switch jobs or start a business because now you have this giant debt hanging over your head. Um, so, so I would say make sure you've got stable income and you're really happy with your profession is the key item. Um, but the second is you just need to make sure you know where you want to live. You know, people tend to discount closing fees, realtor fees, as we discussed earlier. And because they're wrapped into the loan, you don't normally see them. You know, oh, in 30 years, they'll be taken care of. But if you're planning on moving in a year or two and you keep rebuying a house every time you want to move, it really adds up and can eat away at the appreciation, which is why you're trying to buy the house in the first place. Um, and of course, um, sometimes folks, uh, they may not have an adequate emergency fund and they, um, find themselves without money to pay for repairs and whatnot? Exactly. Yeah. So that, that's another temptation. When everything's going well, let's say you do have stable income. Um, I have some friends that this happened to in January and February of 2020. And they basically said, you know what, I've been saving this emergency fund. I'm just going to take it and buy a house before I get priced out of the market because real estate's growing so fast here. And essentially what happened is then the pandemic hit and they lost some income. And now they're in a position where they have to decide, okay, do I want to make my mortgage payment or do I want to take out credit card debt? And um, it's not a great trade-off to be in. And so I think the key is to have patience um, and, and not rush into a big commitment that you can't make, especially if you have other outstanding liabilities. If you just bought a new car um, or you do want to start a business and that's going to take some startup money, 
you know, you don't want to have that liability hanging over your head because, you know, if you default on a house, it becomes much more difficult to default on a house later on in your career. Right. Or to borrow on a house. Right. Well, CJ, I want to uh, thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom about this topic. Greatly appreciate it. You're very welcome, Bob. Thanks.